Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Elise and this is Elise Eats Media. It is the start of 2024 which means I am doing the obligatory end of last year beginning of this year looking back while looking forward series or collection of videos. I think it's pretty much agreed upon that December and January are like the best times of year for any channel that talks about media because you're getting just that juicy content. It's good and bad because we peak really early but then we come back around at the end of the year to the good stuff. I want to talk about my stats from 2023 and then my goals for 2024 with all of my media consumption. This video is going to be movies and TV shows and then my next video is going to be book related. Something I really want to focus on in 2024 is just balance because I think usually I either have a great reading year or a great movie watching slash TV watching year and I want to try to have both in 2024. I think it can be done. 2023 for me was the year of rewatching TV shows and catching up on movie franchises. I did watch some really great movies this year and we'll talk about that. I'm going to do a 2023 releases ranked video. It's coming. I'm just trying to kind of squeeze in some last minute watches so I have as much to talk about in that video as possible. I also feel like I watched a lot of movies against my will. Like that's dramatic but I watched a lot of things that I felt like I should watch or that were leading to some goal that I wasn't that excited about. Looking through my 2023 stats, I don't feel like they necessarily reflect my preferences when it comes to movies. And so in 2024, I'd like that to change. I of course track all of my movie watching on Letterboxd. So I have my year end stats on there. I watched 98 films this year. I reviewed all 98 of them. I always do so that I don't forget. I made four lists, I guess. Two comments. I don't know if that's I left comments or if that's other people leaving comments. I actually don't know really anything about this. I sound so stupid. And 192.7 hours spent. I'm not gonna calculate like what fraction that is. My highest rated films, I think this is exclusively 2023 releases. Um, so I don't wanna talk too much about that because we'll talk about that in my next, not my next video, but my movie video. Here is my week by week. Uh, looks like I hit a bit of a peak mid year and I've been pretty consistent. Went through a little bit of a lull in it looks like August. Here's my weekly breakdown. It looks like I watch mostly on the weekends, which makes perfect sense. My first watch was Glass Onion, which was the second Knives Out movie. I do believe this was a rewatch. Once they put it on Netflix, I watched it with my mom. And then the last film I watched was The Family Stone, Christmas movie. I had actually never seen it before and I liked it. My diary milestones, I just have a 50th one there because I didn't quite make it to 100. And then my most watched, those are all four movies that I watched twice. If I watch something twice, especially like close together, it usually means I'm seeing it with someone else. Here are my top genres. Comedy being number one does make sense. I do like comedy. Action and adventure being second and third is so not me. And this is where we get into, I was watching franchises that I had fun watching, but when you're watching like a five or a seven movie franchise, which I will get to, that takes up a lot of your stats when you watch fewer than a hundred movies. I would personally expect romance to be higher for myself and also crime. I like crime movies a lot. If I were watching movies purely for myself and not trying to kind of check boxes or, you know, watch things that I should watch, I think those two genres would definitely be higher. I mostly watched American movies. I mostly watched movies in English. The themes in nano genres, this is insane. These are all just action, heroes and villains, high speed. Destruction is a nano genre that I like. 26.5% of the movies I watched were new releases. Um, I would like for that to be, well, I'm actually happy with that. I don't really care about like the ratio necessarily. I care more about how many new releases I'm seeing. And I like to keep my backlist numbers pretty high because there are a lot of iconic movies that I haven't watched. I don't know if I've said this before. I got into movies and Letterboxd in like 2020. I watched movies growing up, of course, but once I chose what I watched, like middle school, high school, I exclusively watched TV. So I had a movie awakening in 2020. So I'm very much so still trying to catch up with like the canon, the must watch, which is never ending, by the way. I feel like this is a lot of rewatches, 17 out of 98. I don't really like that number. I think I would like for that to be lower. I review every movie, so that's not a surprise. And then there's my spread, a lot of five stars. Wow, that's a lot of five stars. We're into my most watched stars and directors. This is where you can really tell that I watched some franchises this year, okay? So Mission Impossible, Transformers, 
Indiana Jones. I had never seen Mission Impossible or Transformers, any of them. Indiana Jones, I had seen the first one. They all three had big like sequels coming out this year. I actually did not end up watching the Transformers one that was in theaters. So I like fully marathoned five, sorry, but garbage movies. Actually, the first one is good. My boyfriend grew up watching the Transformers movies and I'm supportive. So I watched them with him. My top actor <laughs> is Tom Cruise and he's tied with Ving Rhames. They're both in the Mission Impossible movies. Also, I see Simon Pegg down there. Also Mission Impossible. Harrison Ford, again, Indiana Jones, Shia LaBeouf. Reno Wilson, I feel like he was Transformers. David Dastelmachian. Oh, Dastelmachian. He's kind of iconic, actually. Yeah, Ant-Man. That was another one that I watched. Um, and he was an Oppenheimer. Katherine Hahn, that's a genuine one. All of my top actors, for the most part, it's because I watched like five movies or seven movies with all the same actor in them. Directors, of course, we have Steven Spielberg and Michael Bay for, again, obvious reasons. The other ones that do make sense though, Miyazaki, Wes Anderson, um, James Gunn is another MCU one, Martin Scorsese, Greta Gerwig. The thing that I didn't do enough of this year was following threads. I, I think it was 2022, I got into like a massive horror movie phase and I just watched horror movie after horror movie after horror movie. I love when I discover a director that I like and I just watch a bunch of their movies or same thing with an actor. I need to do more of that in 2024. I need to follow the crumbs that lead me somewhere. I feel like I was just floating and doing nothing in 2023. My most liked review, Babylon. I didn't even know I watched that in 2023. Highs and lows. So my highest, oh, that's the highest average rating. Godfather part two, obviously great movie. Lowest rated was the Transformers. Which one is this? Oh, it's the last one with Mark Wahlberg, that one was trash. The first one, again, is good, and they just go downhill steeply, may I add. Most popular movie, of course, is Barbie. I feel like that's one of the most popular movies of all time. The most obscure was My Name is Polly Murray. This is a documentary about like a lesser known civil rights activist. Her ideas influenced Ruth Bader Ginsburg's fight for gender equality and Thurgood Marshall's landmark civil rights arguments. I didn't think it was like a great documentary in terms of production and filmmaking, but it was a really interesting story. And then those are just all the movies I watched. Is there anything else? The world map, that's pretty pitiful. And then highest rated films I've yet to see. I need to watch Poor Things, The Holdovers, and definitely Past Lives. So those are my stats. I chose not to be super specific about my film goals in 2024, because as I said, I want it to be authentic. I just want to discover things like I used to. Some specific goals that I do have, I want to watch 40 new movie releases. Aaron and I have a membership to our movie theater where we can just see however many movies we want. One of our New Year's resolutions is to take better advantage of that and have going out to the movies be like at least a weekly thing that we do, even if it's not like a movie that we're super excited about, just to see more movies that come out. I feel like I let a lot of releases pass me by this year, movies that I was vaguely excited about and they just left the theaters without me doing anything about it. I enjoy being a part of the cultural conversation about what movies are coming out. Um, there are quite a few movies that I am excited to see come out this year, so I am gonna try to stay up to date on those. Another kind of ongoing goal that I have is to watch more of the best picture winners at the Oscars. Um, so I decided I wanna try to watch 10 of those this year. I think I've seen 15 out of 95 best picture winners. Of course, by the end of this year, there will be 96 winners, not 95. And it's possible that I've already seen that movie, like I've already seen Oppenheimer and Killers of the Flower Moon and movies that I think have a really good shot at winning. So I'm not gonna count that, even though that would technically up my number. By the end of this year, I will have either seen 25 or 26 of the total minimum, okay? Finally, I do wanna watch more foreign films, specifically directors that are somewhat iconic in the foreign film genre. It's not a genre, but you get what I mean. I've never watched any Fellini. I've never watched any Jacques Tati. Those are both directors that I think I would really love. Um, I also want to watch more Jacques Demy. I love him. I have only seen one Ozu movie, so I want to watch more from him. I didn't assign numbers to this goal, but next year I'd like to see that spread of countries look a little bit more diverse. That said, there are still like so many American movies that I have on my list, so we'll see. On to TV, I don't have stats the way that I do for movies. Um, I do track the series that I watch, but I'm a lot less diligent about it than I am with my movie and book consumption just because what am I gonna do review every episode of a TV show that I watch like mid binge I, I'm not gonna do that but I did go back through my serialized so I could kind of catch you up 
on the shows that I watched this year. I think I said it earlier, but this was the year for me of re-watching the same shows that I've seen a million times. I re-watched Parks and Recreation with Aaron. We both love that show and it had been a couple years since we watched it and it does hold up. This might have been the end of 2022, but I started re-watching How I Met Your Mother also with Aaron. I do everything with Aaron, okay? He's my boyfriend. He's the only person I hang out with. We started watching How I Met Your Mother together because he had never seen it and I remembered it being really good in middle school and high school and I gotta say, I don't think it holds up at all. It's actually hard for me to watch. Okay, it is. So yeah, I am a reality competition show girl at heart. Um, so I also did some rewatches of iconic shows that again, Aaron has never seen. So we started watching Project Runway from season one. And I don't remember what season we got up to. I think like eight or nine. I love that show. We also watched a lot of seasons of Top Chef, which again, obsessed with Top Chef. I watched it a ton when I was a kid and Aaron had never seen it. We went through our Top Chef phase, then our Project Runway phase. We're kind of in a modern family phase right now, which is actually a first time watch for us both. I had seen episodes here or there, but we are loving that show so much. It's like one of my all time favorites and we're only on season four. So there's a lot more to watch. By myself, I went through a little bit of a phase with Sex and the City, which again, I had watched little bits and pieces of, but I still haven't seen it start to finish. Um, so I made it up through like mid season two. I need to get back to it. I was enjoying it. I don't totally love that show and I want to so maybe I just need to keep going with it as for shows that we watched like kind of as they came out I always watch the bachelor franchise so bachelor bachelorette bachelor in paradise what can I say I love that show um, and there's a new season starting end of this month I also watch the Netflix reality dating shows so of course love is blind um, I do watch the ultimatum I don't know if I watched any seasons of that this year but I definitely watched the ultimatum queer love season that came out. And then I also did watch Dancing with the Stars. That's not a dating show, but I love Dancing with the Stars so much. Whenever it ends, I like go into withdrawals. Also seeing Charlie and Mark perform in the finale, like I love them. That's actually a contributing factor to why I don't watch more TV and movies because I'm just watching Charlie D'Amelio's dances on repeat on YouTube. I am obsessed with her on Dancing with the Stars, okay? She's like the best the series has ever seen. Her and like Amber Riley, I don't know. There's just some people who come on that show and like they don't need to be taught a thing. That's my year in television. I regret that I haven't watched more like culturally relevant shows. With the exception of reality shows, I just haven't been up to date on like the popular TV shows in years. Like I haven't seen White Lotus. I haven't seen Succession. I haven't seen Severance. Um, I haven't seen Squid Games. Like, it's embarrassing. I can't fix that all at once, obviously. That's overwhelming. I'd probably like to watch at least one of those shows this year. I don't know. Um, I, I think Succession's over, right? I, I don't know. My main goal for this year is to not rewatch things the same way that I usually do. It's such a reflex for me to just put on The Office or put on friends and just kind of have it on in the background. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that can't be the only way that I'm watching TV. As the representative of like, I don't need to be paying 100% undivided attention to this would be adaptations of books I've read. There are a lot of specifically limited series that I haven't watched. Whether I liked the book or not, I want to watch the show. So like Daisy Jones and the Six is one, uh, Normal People and Conversations with Friends, Little Fires Everywhere, Big Little Lies, like there are a lot of them. I think that's a good place to start. Another way that I can rewatch things in a productive way, I think would be watching Dead to Me, which is on Netflix. And it's one of my favorite shows of all time. I've seen the entire show with the exception of the last season. I do this thing where when something I like is coming to an end, I ignore that thing. I am in denial that Dead to Me is over. There's always gonna be more that I can come back to that I haven't seen yet. And I just can't do that because I love the show too much to leave it unfinished. I think it's three seasons altogether or maybe four, but I can rewatch those and then watch the final season and then it'll be over. And then I can rewatch it one day after I've made some progress on my TV shows. Some other shows that are actually really popular that at one time I was up to date on are Abbott Elementary and Only Murders in the Building. I think both of those I watched the first seasons when they came out was obsessed and then never bothered to like keep up. I take that back, Only Murders in the Building, I stopped watching when I saw Amy Schumer. Okay, I, I'm a human being, I can admit that. The most recent season was all over social media and I was getting FOMO for not watching it, so I need to watch it. I actually think Aaron would probably love to watch that with me. And then Abbott Elementary, another show that I really love, and it's not the kind of show that I need to be giving my undivided attention to. 
So I can watch that as well. And then a reality competition show that I've not been keeping up with is RuPaul's Drag Race. I am so behind. I think season 13 was the last season that I watched. Um, but I love that show. I would like to get back into that. Maybe again, in place of rewatching old seasons of Top Chef and Project Runway, I can watch new seasons of Drag Race. I am intentionally not choosing a lot of shows that have a lot of episodes. Like for example, Modern Family, I think there's 11 seasons of 24 episodes a season. That's taking me some time to get through. I can't pick full length network TV shows and expect to get through numerous of them. But one that I would like to get to this year is The Sopranos, okay? I know it's an iconic show. I went through a mafia obsession a couple of years ago when I read The Godfather. I was watching so many mob movies. I don't know how I didn't watch The Sopranos, but I've been seeing stuff about it recently with this conversation about mob wife style being in. And I'm just like, you know what? Maybe it's time for me to finally watch The Sopranos. Those are my goals for my TV and movie consumption this year. I just wanna kind of give myself a track to stay on because I only have so many, you know, minutes and hours of this life that I can spend consuming media. Do I wanna spend them watching The Office over and over again? I don't, although there are worse ways to spend your time. I hope you guys enjoyed my little conversation about my 2023 stats and my 2024 goals for my movie and TV watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next video, which again will be my book stats for 2023, as well as reading goals for 2024. And make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and a comment. I will see you soon. Bye.